Hey guys, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel if you guys like this content. We try to look at cryptocurrency in a different way than most channels do, and we look at um, different types of metrics, and we try to back up what we're doing with actual evidence, um, and we don't take other people's word for, for anything. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and dive in into uh, another video on weighting your portfolio by uh, different methods. Um, and the reason why we're doing this is because I got a lot of good feedback on the last video and some requests. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna jump back in. So so one of the requests I got was to essentially you know look at how successively weighting each coin um, would affect things. So if we were to weigh things by market cap, if and this goes back to November seventeenth, two thousand and fifteen, if we had put a thousand dollars into the the top ten coins. Uh, this is what would have happened. So we're first going to start with just the top one. So this is Bitcoin. So if we had put a thousand dollars into Bitcoin, um, this is what we, this is this is what our portfolio would have done. I mean, it would have gone up to around sixty grand or so, and currently it'd be worth a little less than thirty grand. Not too bad. Now, if we included, say, the top two cryptos and weighted it by market cap, um, we would have done a little bit better. Um, and you can see we would have peaked a little bit later as well. And the reason for that is because the, the, a lot of the alts actually peaked in early um, 2018 as opposed to late December of 2017, which is when Bitcoin peaked. Um, now, you know, the difference is only a few tens of thousands. It's not really that significant. Uh, what's a few ten thousand among friends? Um, so let's, um, let's look to see how we, how we continue to, um, you know, move up as we, you know, include more and more coins in the top 10. What does it do? What would it have done if we had weighted it by the market cap? you can see that adding a third one doesn't really change a thing. So even though we're putting a little bit of money towards the number three crypto, our ROI would have basically been the same. If we had done it to the top four, so we're kind of increasing our risk a little bit, um, we would have actually captured Ethereum. And because of that, it would have actually increased our ROI quite a lot, um, several tens of thousands. In fact, instead of getting what, just with Bitcoin, we would have gotten about 60,000. By including the top four weighting by market cap, we would have gotten over 90,000. Um, so, you know, that's a 50% increase um, than just having it in Bitcoin, which is pretty significant. Um, and then the, the funny thing is from here on out, weighting it by the top five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten doesn't really do anything. The reason, because we weighted it by market cap and the last five or six coins, we only put a few dollars into them, so they really didn't affect anything. Um, and especially on a logarithmic scale, you're not going to see those, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars difference um, that easily. So clearly weighting by market cap, I think is a really, it's a, it's a good way to go. If you, um, it's a good conservative way, I think. I mean, notwithstanding the significant risks of being in crypto in the first place, you know, if you, if you take that risk and you're, you're okay with that and you just treat that as the normal risk of just being in the space, then weighting stuff by market cap is actually a, it's, it's probably the most one of the most conservative ways you could go, um, which would entail putting most of it into Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, I, Bitcoin has stood the test of time so far. Um, I don't really see any reason why why it wouldn't continue to do so. If, if the crypto market's going up, then Bitcoin's also going up. Uh, but the reverse is not necessarily true. So just because uh, Bitcoin is going up does not mean the rest of the crypto market is going up. So let's move forward. Now, I want to I wanna weight it by something we did not weight it by in the last video. So if you remember the last video where we were looking at different ways to weight your portfolio, we looked at market cap, we looked at the square root of market cap. We also looked at raising it to a power, raising every coin's market cap to the, pa uh, to the same power. And we actually optimized that to see what would have given us the best return on our investment. And it would have been raising it to the 0 0.09 power which clearly it's not like anyone was doing that, but it also turned out that by raising it to that power, it roughly corresponded to putting around $100 into each coin. Now, it was around 150 something for Bitcoin and maybe like $88 for the number 10 coin, but more or less it was around $100. And the difference between weighting it by that you know random number and then just putting $100 in was only a $5,000 difference at the peak. I think it was like 330,000 versus 335,000. Um, but actually, that would be the optimal way if we were weighting everything to the same power. But that's not the only way we can weight things. There's other ways we can weight things that might be more optimal 
while we're still applying, say, the same operation. So one of the ways is um, applying the, the, the logarithm to the market cap. So if we were to do that, uh, what, what would we have done? So let's first look at, I mean, this is just the first graph you would have seen earlier. It's just Bitcoin, so it's the same thing. But it gets interesting because if you weight it by the logarithm of the market cap, it, re it significantly reduces the amount you're putting in into Bitcoin um, because it's, you know, its market cap is, is, is much higher than any of the others. So in fact, by weighting it by the logarithm of market cap, you would have put a significant amount of money in the number two coin and you would have actually seen a peak at around $400,000. I think about that. I mean, we're, we're talking the difference between $60,000 and $400,000. So the point is, is, you know, I would say that, you know, increasing, you know, by putting more coins in, you diversify yourself, which reduces the risk. You know, you're not, you're not just putting in into one coin. At the same time, you know, Bitcoin is probably, you know, the most conservative one to put your money in. So it, you know, there, there's kind of a, a give and take there. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to just start throwing all of your money into as many random altcoins as you can. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, let's look at the top three. So if you'd done the top three, you actually would have uh, seen uh, a little bit of a decrease because um, it would have been better to just put everything into into um, uh, Bitcoin and XRP at the time was the number two. Um, I think number three was was Litecoin. So putting it into that actually would have reduced your your ROI compared to if you had just weighted it by the top two. But now the interesting thing is if you had done it in the top four, so you did um, Bitcoin, XRP, Litecoin, and Ethereum, this would have been your ROI. And this is weighting it by the logarithm. So basically just take the, the, the log of the market cap and weight your, how you, how you, you, you take that, then you um, take the logarithm of the market cap, then you divide it by the sum of the logarithms of all of the market caps, but the sum of each logarithm, not the logarithm of the whole thing, but the log of each one plus um, the log of each, uh, the log of Bitcoin's market cap plus the log of XRP, etc. And then you multiply by $1,000 and then you would get how much money you would put into each coin. Now the crazy thing is by doing it this way, by including the top four, you would have actually seen a peak at um, or around a little over $500,000, which is pretty, pretty impressive um, that um, the ROI would have gotten that high by weighting it by the logarithm of the market cap for the top four. Now, this is where, you know, things start to get a little telling. What if you had weighted it by the top five? Well, it starts to decrease a little bit. Not a lot, but it does a little. Six, you can see it going down. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So, as you increase your risk, you know, you're increasing your risk by you're including all these other coins, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You're, you're diversifying your portfolio. You're hoping one of them potentially takes off because you don't know which one might. We didn't know Ethereum was going to be the one that um, did as well as it did. I mean, XRP also did amazingly well. Um, Litecoin didn't do quite as well as the other uh, those other two, which I just showed. Um, but you know, it's hard to know, like you know, which which one of those coins out of the top ten are, are really going to um, take off. So if we if we move forward here, what if we just plot? the the peak value and the um i'll move this over here so we can uh see see the legend so so the red one is uh, basically this is the top one so this would just be bitcoin and then top two so bitcoin and xrp and then top three would be bitcoin xrp and litecoin etc so this is just taking these peak values from the previous graph so if we were to go here just taking the peak values and the current values so if you were to take the peak values um and you weighted it this you can see your trend, and this would be weighting it by market cap. So you can see that as you as you increase your um, the number of coins you look at, it actually it does go up. Um, it did in the last in the last cycle, but it does pretty much plateau. It plateaus at around ninety thousand dollars, and adding in more coins didn't really do much, and that was because the Bitcoin's dominance was so high. You can also see that the the peak or um, the value that your portfolio would currently be worth doesn't really change that much. It'd, it'd be around, you know, it'd be between 25 and 30 grand, no matter how you weighted um, this, if you had weighted it by market cap. But 
if you had weighted it by um, by the logarithm of market cap, I mean, you can look, this is your peak value. So obviously these are the same because it's just looking at Bitcoin, but you, you, you quickly shoot up, you know, to, to $400,000 by including the top two. You come back down to 300,000 by including the top three, and then all the way up to 500,000 by including the top four. Now, here's where it gets interesting because you can see that as you as you continue to weight things by by the logarithm of the market cap, as you um, include say the, the top five, the top six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it actually decreases your return. So you might you know one of the reasons you should you should really think about is I know some mentality is um, some people have this mentality of okay well. I, I will just I'll put a hundred dollars into fifty coins and I'll just hope one of them takes off. And that's not necessarily like a terrible strategy, but since a lot of coins don't take off, let's say you only get lucky on say one of them and one of them goes up say a hundred times, but you only put a hundred dollars in it. So that would have given you um, uh, ten thousand dollars. But what about all the other money that you probably just lost. So you would have lost 49 times 100. So you would have lost 4,900. So then you would have only made $5,100. So if you make $5,100 by investing, say, $100 into 50 different coins, what if you would just put that, you know, $5,000 just into Ethereum? All it would have had to do was go up 2x, and you already would have done just as well as if you had put $100 into, say, 50 coins, and only one of them went up and if it had gone up a hundred X. Um, so, you know, when you think about things like that, and that's assuming the other ones, uh, basically just go to zero. When you think about things like that, it, you know, it does put things in a different perspective. You know, do you want to just throw all your money at these random coins that you've never heard of? Um, or do you want to, you know, really, really build your positions in, in coins that, you know, are, are, you really think are going to, you know, potentially change the world. So I think it's, you know, it's a tough call. Um, now, you know, I'm not saying don't ever look at any low cap coins. I mean, I myself do have some smaller cap uh, cryptocurrencies in my portfolio, but you don't want to just completely dominate your portfolio with these coins. I, I mean, I think that for me, my focus was, okay, first get Bitcoin and Ethereum. Once you've gotten those, once you've got a, a you know, good um, positions in those coins and those assets, you know, then start to branch out. Look at some of the other ones in the top 10. Um, if you've, if you've looked at those, you know, there's other coins that are maybe in the top 50 or the top 100, um, or even lower if you want to get super risky. But remember, for every dollar you put in, a, you know, a cryptocurrency that's say number 2000 on the list, that's, you know, that's a potential, um, opportunity cost of putting it on, say, something like Bitcoin or Ethereum or XRP or any of the ones in the top 10 um, that would have a much higher chance of um, going up. Uh, so you just have to consider that. So, you know, consider how you weight um, your portfolio. And, you know, I just for, for fun, I went ahead and, and did number 11 and 12 here. Um, so if we, uh, let's see if we go to the next slide, you can see, so I weighted it by the logarithm of the market cap, and then I included, say, the top 11 and 12 coins, and you can see it the, the ROI on your peak and your current value just keeps going down. So you just consider that, um, you know, when you're, when you're investing, there are going to be some coins, okay, first of all, assuming we have another bull run, there will be some coins that are not in the top 10, which will likely outperform some of the ones in the top 10. Um, it's just natural that there are going to be some that, you know, that, that come out of nowhere and just and, and take the, the asset class by storm, and you could argue that some are already doing that. Um, so just consider, um, consider that. I, you know, I, think it's, uh, I think it's important to put a decent amount in, in the top two or three, and then maybe put a little bit more into the top 10. Um, sort of medium risk, and then for some high risk ones, I would, you know, put some, you know, you can go down the list, and if there's some that you, you really just really believe in their, in their, in what they're doing, then there's nothing wrong with that. Just know that, um, know that for every dollar that goes into those other coins, that's dollars that are not going into coins, which have a better track record. So just be willing to, to kind of accept that risk reward ratio. 
because um, here you can kind of see there was there was actually an optimal point, and that would have been putting weighting it by the log of the market cap for the just the top four. And in fact, if you had done that in 20, late 2015, you would have done better than if you had included the top five through 12. So just, just remember that. Um, so I think that, that pretty much covers uh, what I want to cover in this video. Um, please like and subscribe if you guys like this content. Uh, I, I went ahead and did this, this video just because I got a lot of feedback and a lot of people said it was useful to them. Um, so if you're if you're looking to you know build out a cryptocurrency portfolio, I would just look at different ways of weighting your your risk um, and you know determining what you're okay with and and proceeding from there. And I you know just remember that you know you you need to be doing at least as well as Bitcoin is doing by itself. I mean if you're if you're just putting your all your eggs in say one basket. Um, you know, and you're and you're coming in way less than the ROI that Bitcoin is getting, then you're just doing something wrong. Um, make sure you know you're you can at least out you know at least do as well as Bitcoin. And the first step to doing to to getting close to Bitcoin is just by having a decent amount of Bitcoin. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Um, but not that not that I'm telling anyone to to go buy Bitcoin or anything. But in terms of you know your risk reward ratio, just consider. Um, consider those aspects of um, of investing. Not that this is financial advice. This is just how I uh, look at investing in this very risky space. Um, okay, guys, that's it for this video. Remember to subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.